Hello and welcome to the very first episode of For Your Eyes Only, the only place where you can learn about your eyes and have a little fun at the same time. My name's Harbeer. We're coming to you today from High Street Eye Care in Abbotsford, BC. Before I go any further, I need to introduce to you my friend, my colleague, and the brains behind this tuberate operation, Dr. Einstein. Want to say hi to the people out there, Dr. E? No, <laughs> he's a little shy. So for our very first episode, we're going to discuss a very simple but very common topic in the exam room, which is nearsightedness, also known as myopia. Nearsightedness is a condition where we can see pretty well up close, but can't see so well far away. In other words, blurry distance vision. We can use the camera to give us an example of what a nearsighted person might see. If you can see in this example here, the image that's far away, that's the screen there in the distance, is very blurry, but if we hold something a little closer up, it actually is in pretty good focus. So what causes nearsightedness? Now if we look at our model of our eye, in a normal eye or an average eye, light or an image would come through the front of the eye and pass through this, the cornea here, the lens, and then focus right on the back of the eyeball right here in the retina. In a nearsighted eye, the eyeball is actually larger or longer than average, so when light passes through the front, it actually falls short of the retina, it doesn't focus right on the back of the eye, and that's what causes blurry vision. So the next question usually is, why does nearsightedness develop? And the short answer really is genetics or heredity. So basically, the same types of factors that determine whether you're going to be short or tall, or have big hands or small hands, the same types of factors that determine if you'll have a longer eyeball or a shorter eyeball. Dr. E likes to think about things more from an evolutionary perspective. He says that over the generations we've spent more and more time indoors and if you think about over the last couple of decades, spending a lot more time in front of computers and other devices that could need us to look up close and simply our eyes have adapted to our new environments by becoming more nearsighted. Alright, so what are the options for treatment for someone who's nearsighted? Well, there's the simple and always reliable option of a good pair of glasses. There's the option of contact lenses and the option that's becoming very common these days, laser surgery like PRK or LASIK, which we'll talk more about in a future episode. Now, for those of you who are nearsighted, you probably remember seeing on your prescription or on the side of your contact lens boxes that there's a negative number or a minus prescription, and that's because a negative prescription or a minus lens is what helps to push that image back onto the retina to give us clear vision again. We can show you again in our camera model, if we hold a minus lens, as you can see here, in front of the camera, the distance image becomes clear again. All right, so that's nearsightedness. Thanks for joining Dr. E and myself for the first episode of For Your Eyes Only. I hope you had a good time. If you have any questions for us, feel free to leave them below. Don't forget to subscribe. My name's Harbeer. We'll see you next time. But as we hold something a little closer up, um... <laughs> <laughs>